Uh, today we're going to look at uh, the old tried and true Segovia scales. I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this, I know, but um, you still see the Segovia scales out for sale. Publishers are going to sell it as long as they possibly can, as long as as long as guitars keep buying it. Um, and you know, I I played them too. I played the things for years, and. Uh, once you although once you think about what what he's doing with the scales um, and and what he does with the scales really are is is a good thing is a good thing but it's just not complete okay and you need to realize what you're dealing with so he he you know it starts out with the C scale and it's in second position uh, it's what I call the 5-2 scale, which it starts on the fifth string with your second finger, okay? We'll get to that in a minute. But he goes through this, and he shifts on the third string up to the next to get two octave. And back down. And he shifts on the third string again. So it's a two octave scale up, two octave scale down. That's the way classical musicians have always done it. Uh, at least we did for years. Uh, does it have to be two octaves? Does it have to be just one octave? No, it could be on the guitar, it could be the whole thing. I think a lot of that is, is specific to the piano. Although if they were really, if you were really gonna practice your scales on piano to be a virtuoso, you would probably play as many notes in your scale as you could go up and as many as you can get in coming down and go back to where you started and that's what i tend to do on the guitar but that's just one aspect of it the thing is he, he shifts on the segovia shifted on the third string for the first scale why why the third why can't you shift on the fifth string why can't you shift on the first you could shift on any one of them that's the, that's the deal Okay, and the other is to have a, a, a way of thinking about it uh, to always do it basically the same, well not basically, the same way every single time. What's the rule? Well, the rule is, that I use, is I'm going to shift into the new position as soon as possible with the finger that goes there. So for this one, this 5-2, two octaves scale, uh, five, two to six, four. This is exactly correct. That's the first time you can get into the new position. But coming back down, it's here. Where Segovia is doing. kind of a cool idea you know the same fingers the same fingers but uh, in my way of doing things I'm gonna go three and the next finger that's gonna I can get into the next position very quickly with the common finger between both scales and the common note which is move my fourth finger now that's one aspect of it the other part is um, when you know the when you know the seven movable primary the seven movable scale patterns, um, you realize that well you've got you know, I could stay here in the second position on C and I could play all the way across and I have to stretch out with my first finger out of position, but I stretch out I don't shift don't shift stretch. So I just played all the notes in that position that I can. Why not? Okay, when you improvise on guitar, in jazz or whatever, uh, you're going to use all the notes you can. Why, why be confined? Why try to confine yourself to one octave, right, or two octaves for that matter? Play them all in that position. So what you're going to get then, with this idea in mind. With the you've got the five two scale we just played up just played all the way through I could play what I call the six four scale in C so you'll notice that I had to stretch out with one finger now in the 
these scale patterns you can stretch out with one or four but never both okay <laughs> The idea is to connect these two adjacent scales, 6-2, as you will learn if you, if, you, if you deal with it, you'll, you'll learn that you have these two, there's always these scales that are adjacent to one another. And in this case, it's the 5-2 and the 6-4 are next to each other. Okay, so I'm going to start the Segovia scale, the, the, the original one the the five two the c scale okay and let's just say instead of shifting on the third string heck let's pick one i roll the dice boom and i decide i'm going to shift on the fourth string okay so here we go that's the first note common to both scales on the fourth string I just did let's go let's go let's go fifth string shift right away uh, third string we did second shift string a string below where you started in this case we started on the fifth string we haven't done the sixth string yet so the way I do this it's kind of a long way around but it does work I'm gonna shift on the sixth string well I'm not there yet so I gotta go all the way across You know, I'll just I'll spit it out here real quick. You need to look at this, these scale patterns, uh, which I need to get this published so it's out there for people. But it's not the cage system, okay? The cage system is this idea that you hear bantered about, and uh, you know, I never I never heard of it until I was probably sixty years old. I just knew this other one, this other way that I did it. And somebody said, oh, it's just a cage system. I go, well, oh, wait, wait a minute. Not, it's not really that. I see that, I see that part of it is you've got this 5-2, this the 6-2, the 5-4, the 6-4, and the 4-1. But it doesn't include the other two scales, which I call the 6-1. Now, on the 6-1, you're actually out of position. And then you come back in. Once again, remember, you can stretch out with one or four, but never both. It's one or the other. So you're out with, out with this one, one, and then you're back in position, out. The question is, why would you do those scales, really? Well, one, because they're there, okay? You should do it. It's, they follow the same rules as the others. Um, but there, there is a good idea there. If I had to do a, an F sharp scale or a G scale, for that matter, or any other one, starting with my first finger, why would I use this? Where I stretch out three times to do that scale when I could just use the 6-2 and not stretch out at all, right? Why is that? Well, if I needed to play an F scale and I need all those notes, yeah, I'm going to use, I have to use this one. 
I have to use the six one. Right? Yeah, I have to. Or the five one for the B flat. So they're they're good they're good to have in your back pocket because yeah, you might need them. Okay. And besides that, it's 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 real. You know, it's it's part of the system. So, um, you know, don't let me upset you over the over the Segovia scales and to dare say that there's something that Segovia came up with that we shouldn't do. But you know, because I'm just a I'm just a hit guitar player from Texas, really. So, uh, but I have thought about it. Um, but it's like I said, the Segovia scales are were good in their original idea. Um, I think guitarists at the time, you know, none of us really knew enough. Um, now guitarists are much, much more savvy, I think. So it's just time to, you know, take those scales and, you know, put them on a back burner. Start to use something that something that will serve you much, much better. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again.